so much for joining with us on tonight. Today, we want to say welcome to our visitors all the way from Valley Bay. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which 
cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, ears, and doers of this holy word. Dear Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. God, we come before you humbly as we know how, oh God, just to say thank you for this day, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. We thank you for starting us on our way, oh God. God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs on today, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God. And God, we realize, God, if it had not been for you on our side, oh God, where would we be, oh God? And so, God, we thank you, God. We thank you for being our help and our strength on today, oh God. God, we thank you, Lord God, for being to be, oh God. Now, God, I pray and ask you will bless the people of God on today, oh God. Have your way in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. You are welcome in this place, oh God. Have your way, have your way, have your way, oh God. God, we thank you, God. We celebrate you, God. We worship you, oh God. In the beauty of holiness, oh God. Have your way, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this prayer. Amen and amen.
is still one thing that you can think of that if it had not been for the Lord, you would have been sleeping in your grave. Is there one thing you can thank the Lord for that if you if it had not been for the Lord, you would have been in a, a nice, a nice hospital downtown. But because God is the great physician, He is the doctor. He's the one that heals us and makes us whole. Is there even one thing that you can think about this morning that, that if it had not been for God, you would be in the midst of depression right now? If God had not stayed the hand of the devil, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would have taken you out. If it wasn't for God, he would is there one thing you can thank him for? Because you're not thirsty this morning. Because God is looking a way of quenching your thirst. Is there one thing you can thank him for this morning? Say, God, I just thank you. God, I glorify you. God, I lift you. God, I magnify your name. For you are God all by yourself. And Lord, we thank you for just being God. We thank you for the way that you do things. Lord, we thank you for keeping us. Lord, we are in our right mind because of you. And this morning, I just stop by and church this morning. Just to say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. And then we want to just say constantly, Lord, thank you. We just want to say constantly, Lord, that we appreciate you. We want to say constantly, Lord, that we have gratitude just for who you are. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God, we magnify you. We lift you, Father. We glorify you. For you are worthy. You are worthy. There is no God like you, God. You give us strength when we're weak. You give us help when we're helpless. You give us hope in hopeless situations. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Thank you for being a heart regulator. Thank you for being a heart fixer. Thank you for being a mind keeper. There's nobody can do it like you, God. And we are constantly saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, we thank you. Matter of fact, Lord, you, you turn our whole world around. That's why I'm And I just want to say thank you. God, you kept us through dangerous scenes and dangerous unseen. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's why I'm I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Constantly. Constantly. Thank you, Lord. Constantly. Over and over again. One more, one more time, and then one more time, and then one more time. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God has blessed us one more year. Just to raise our hands and lift our voices and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. For another word. We are here, but we don't have to be here. There are some people who went to sleep last night and didn't wake up this morning. There are some people who woke up this morning and still not here. You can be here one minute and be gone the same minute. But it's because of God's amazing grace. I say it's God's amazing grace. It is God's amazing grace that has kept us and keep right on blessing us. There is nothing like the God we serve. And there is no one like him. 
And that's why we stopped by the house just to say, Lord, I thank you. I, I know you could have thanked him at the house. I, I know you could have thanked him driving down the road. But it's just something about the presence of believers that come together and, and eyes sharp as eyes and rubbing off on each other. That we can get together and say, Lord, you spared me one more time. And I'm glad about it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Songwriter said, You turn my whole world. My whole world. You turn my whole You turn every inch of my world. You turn my whole world around. And Lord, I just want to say thank you. Don't be too mean just to say thank you. Don't be too stingy just to say thank you. We've come today, Lord, to say thank you, Lord. One more chance. One more opportunity. Just to say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. And he is here. He's with us right here today. I call your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we will read verses 18 through 20. Verses 18 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading from the New King James Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 18, 19, and 20. When you found it, you will discover these words. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? Hmm. But now, indeed, there is, there are many members, yet one body. I want to talk about God's body. All right, all right. God's body. God's, God's body. When we talk about God's body, it is God's church. Mm -hmm. God's body are born again believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. God's body is those who have trusted in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God's body are made up of individuals who have come to the conclusion that Jesus is the Savior. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they have come to the conclusion, the belief in the story, in the person of Jesus Christ, and his story of his death, burial, and resurrection will get them to heaven. That is God's body. The bride of Christ, the body of Christ, it is the bride of Christ that God is coming back to receive unto himself. Yeah, yeah. The Apostle Paul says in another passage, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, he says, my brothers and sisters, I would not that you are ignorant. Concerning those who are asleep. Uh -huh. yeah. But those who died with this hope. Yeah. That Jesus died on Calvary and rose on the third day. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Those who have this lively hope. They will die but Jesus will come back to get them. All right, all right. He says to those who have lost loved ones in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First Thessalonians chapter 4, he says, I don't want you to, to sorrow 
I don't want you to be sad like some do. As if you have no hope. He says, remember now, those who died in Christ Jesus, at the trump of God, they will rise first. He goes on to say, and those of us who remain shall be caught up with him in mid-air. It is God's body that will be raptured from the earth. Amen will be caught up with Jesus Christ in mid-air. And if because we trust Jesus, yes, sir. we will forever be with the Lord. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18 closes out this pericope by saying, comfort one another yes, sir. Yes, sir. with yes. these words. Yes, yes. We're looking forward to a bright future. Amen. Amen. But I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that you can have a bright future right now. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus says the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I have come. Yes. That you might have life and have that life more abundantly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. We want to live abundantly on planet earth yes, sir. Yes, yes. because the fact of the matter is when we leave here uh -huh. you think we have church on Sunday morning well, we sure enough going to have church on the other side yes. Thank you, Lord. if the music is too loud here well, just get ready over there we are going to sure enough have some church Amen. The songwriter declares that this is just a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. When we get to heaven, we're going to sure enough have some church. Right. Right. Yes, when we get in the presence of God, God is going to look forward to us, and he's looking forward to it today, that we sure enough give him glory. Right. Don't wait till you get to heaven. Yeah. All right. Don't get upset with the drama, the organist, the pianist, and the keyboardist, as well as the guitarist now. When we get to heaven, we sure enough are going to hear some music. And we sure enough are going to give him glory. Can you imagine walking the streets of heaven? I'm talking about God's body. Walking the streets, streets of heaven and you're walking on gold. I'm talking about looking at the, the fence, the wall, and you see Jasper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about looking at gates and somebody said that they were pearly gates. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to see this vision later on, mm -hmm. you must be, you got to be, you have to be born again. Yeah, yeah. Now, being born again is not running, jumping, shouting, these things you may do, that's left up to you and the Holy Ghost. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Amen. When we look at the text, we're talking about God's body. Yes, sir. The Apostle Paul writes in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as well as Romans chapter 12, that everybody in the body is valuable to the body. All right. It doesn't matter, young man, doesn't matter, young lady, how young you are, you are valuable to the body. Right. Matter of fact, you are a vital part of the body. Yeah. It says, it says that everybody have different parts of the body. Yes, sir. And because we are different parts of the body, then we need to operate in unity with each other. I'm telling you, you're so important to God that the Bible says that God has set you in the body. God has blessed you in the body. God has strategically placed you in the body of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You're not here because you just chose to be here. Yeah. And when I talk about the body, I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about people who have trusted Jesus as their personal Savior. We're in God's body. Yeah, yeah. We are the body of Christ. The whole world is watching us. Some writer says, God has turned our whole world around. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
God has messed up Satan. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even this morning, Satan had a plan for somebody's life. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. Even this morning, Satan wanted to sabotage your worship. Yeah, you even this morning, the devil is looking forward to depressing you and leading you into a moment where you throw up your heads and holler. Oh, yeah. But thank God thank for God. Jesus. Amen. Thank God that we have the conquering king of Calvary. Amen. Jesus himself, he's the conquering king. King of Calvary, he's made a way out of no way for all of us. I just stop by to tell you that everybody in the room deserves to have a probation officer. I, I think you church folk didn't get that. You goody too few folk didn't get that. Those of you who have never done any wrong, you didn't get that. But everybody in the room ought to be reporting in once a week to a probation officer. Everybody in the room ought to be giving samples. Everybody in the room ought to be paying for restitution. Because Romans chapter 3 and 23 says, we all have sinned, not y'all have sinned. And because we all have sinned, all of us were messed up from the start. And I'm not talking about bunions on your toes. I don't know how that translates, but <laughs> I'm not talking about a crooked finger. I'm not talking about a sore that just won't heal. I'm talking about sin has messed us up. You're right. You're right, man. And you know the thing about sin? We have a sin nature even after we say. Uh -huh. right. And every now and then that sin nature will reach up and try to take control of us. Sin nature wants control of our hearts. Sin nature wants control of our mind. But remember, you are in God's body. You are part of God's body. And you can't just keep giving in to sin. When we have a sin nature, and since we have a sin nature, we enjoy sin. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how long you've been saved. Uh, I'm just, just the other day, I said to a person, I said, it's not that you're so holy that you have not sinned. It's because sin had not that your door yet. All right, all right. Yeah. Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 7, he says that there's a wrestle going on. There's a fight going on. There's a tussle going on. And it's a tussle on the inside. It's a fight on the inside. There is something going on with all of us. In this room, everybody under my voice, there's a wrestle going on between right and wrong, good and bad, spiritual and unspiritual. I told some senior citizens the other day, I'm convinced that you didn't stop all the sinning that you stopped. Because you got saved, sanctified, and woo, filled with his precious Holy Ghost. I'm convinced that some of us, as far as I'm concerned, including me, some of us stop sinning because we got too old to do it. We just can't do it anymore. We, we just can't hang out anymore. We just can't. Go, we, what you look like sitting up in the club sleep? What you look like dancing on the dance and throwing your sugar drop? What do you look like popping, popping your pills while you're trying to go between the next song and the next song? You just had to give it up. We just couldn't keep doing it. And even those who are on pills, when they go out to eat, they got to stop right there after they put the first bite in their mouth to pop that pill because you can't make it without it. Now, what you look like popping pills on the club? In the club, on the club floor. Some of us just got so old until we just can't do it. Some of us have gotten to the conclusion that oh, it's just time for me to give this up. I, I can't handle it anymore. And then there's the other group who convinced that they can still do the same thing they did when they were teenagers. They convinced, and those are the ones that are on crutches now. Those are the ones that, that have messed up uh, body parts right now. I remember, I remember, I remember. I had played 12 years of baseball. 
never had an injury at all. Here I am playing in a softball game. I said I grew up playing baseball. Here I am playing in a softball game in a church league. I went round second. I was a leadoff batter. I was fast. I said I was fast. I was fast. I, could, I was able to look at the ball and beam, put it on the infield or outfield. I could poke it where I wanted to be. But at the age of 37 years old, I was the leadoff batter again in the first inning. Bing! I hit the ball between shortstop and second. I'm going to make a double out of it. And I rounded first, hit second, and forgot the bag was a stationary bag. That means it doesn't matter how hard you hit it, lady, it ain't going to move. And I jammed my left ankle. But you know, I'm a superstar. I was up to bat again in the third inning. And I rounded first, and I went to second, and guess what I did at age 37? I hit the same second base with the same leadoff lead and twisted the same ankle in the same game, and we supposed to play a double hitter. Today, I don't even know how the double hitter came out. My wife to be, my fiance, hauled me off to the hospital. I am laying in the hospital now. I'm about to get married. I think I'm in love. Yeah, yeah. And she hearing me hollering more than the baby next door. This little lady, this little Asian woman, she may have weighed 98 pounds. She she came up and she said, I've got to put it back in place. Yeah. Sister Henry, this little woman looked like she couldn't bother a flea. She said, I got to put it back in place. I never had an injury like this before. Go and put it back in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what you do. I heard a baby next to me crying. There was a baby in the cubicle next to me, and the baby was crying. And the baby was crying about 12 decibel bells, about 12 dB. But when that little lady caught my foot, and popped it back in place. The baby was grounded out. I was like, and I didn't call on Jesus. I should have. I, I didn't call on Mama. I didn't say Carolyn. I just said, ah! It taught me. When you're too old, you set your old self down. Right. I do the modified version of softball now. I do the modified version of football now. It's not because I'm so good. It's only because God's amazing grace has kept me. And because of God's amazing grace, I'm left here to tell the story. When you look at the text, the Apostle Paul points out the fact that all of us have gifts. And these gifts are in the body. No church, no body, no church of Christ is opened up without gifts in the body. And everybody who has gifts, everyone who has one gift, most of us have several gifts, everyone who has gifts, has something to offer the church. That's right, that's right. My, 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 first point, my, my first point to you this morning is the fact that God sets. God sets us in the body. God sets us in the body for a particular purpose. I don't play the organ. I sit on it and I run my fingers across it. I don't play the good talk. I can thumb it every now and then. I don't play the piano nor the keyboard. I can kind of play some people beat on the drum. But the fact of the matter is, when the drummer shows up, he said, man, move over. 
<laughs> Go find you something to read, something to focus on, or something to talk about. But the fact of the matter is, God has given all of us gifts in the body. And as we celebrate these 30 years of ministry, we need to understand that God has set us in the body. And he set us in the body for the purpose of giving him glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Where, are, where are you set in the body? Mm -hmm. God has strategically placed you. God has put you. God has designed you to fit in the body so much so until you are able to bless others in the body. Mm -hmm. I, I said, I've said this over and over again. I said it again. There are three ways you know that you are operating in the gift that God has put in you. There are three ways to know that you are operating in the gifts that God has given you. Number one, number one, when you operate in the gift that God has given you, you enjoy doing it. You like doing it. You get joy. When you see the musicians up here, they are smiling, they're singing into the mic because God has given them this gift. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And they're excited about it. Yeah. Mm. And they, they eat, sleep, and drink it. Mm. So the first thing is, when you are operating in your gift, the gift that God has set you in the body for this purpose, when you're operating in your gift, Guess what? You enjoy doing it. That's right. That's right. The second thing about you when you operate in your gift, God has set you in your gift. God has placed you in your gift. Other people are blessed when you do what you do. When you operate in your gift, when you find your place in, in your giftedness in the body of Christ, when you have been blessed by God to operate in a gift, guess what? Other people are blessed by what you do. That's why Brother Miles and Brother Whitlock allows me to teach Sunday school every now and then. Because they're operating their gifts. That's why one Sunday I walked in the youth class and Sister Davis went in there. I started tinkling with the computer and the youth just stared at me. Like, what are you doing here? It's because they operate in their gifts. And when they operate in their gifts, people are blessed when they operate in their gifts. The third reason. The third way of telling when you operate in your gifts, God is glorified. Amen. God gets the glory when you operate in your gifts. See, the fact of the matter is, God has set you. God has designed you. God has positioned you. God has placed you right in your gift, and you need to be utilizing your gift. What is your gift? What are you called to do in God's worship? What are you called to do after worship? What are you called to do before worship? I walk in the finance room, and they just stop and stare at me. Here he comes again. <laughs> They're in their rock operating their gifts. And they don't need my input. They don't need my distraction. So they just stop and wait till I leave. And then they continue again. It's because when you operate in your gifts, God is glorified. Amen. God is lifted up. God gets the glory when you operate in your gift. Look at what the text says in, in verse number 18. It says, but now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body as it pleases God. God is glorified when you operate in your gift. Are you running from your gift? Yeah. All right now. Are you hiding behind the excuse that I'm an introvert? I don't like talking. I don't like being around people. And God has a gift for you. He's placed this gift in you. And he's placed you in the body so you can use this gift. What is your giftedness? He has placed you in the body. He set you for a purpose. What will be your legacy when you leave here? 
Would it be that you just attend the church and you are a faithful member? Or would it be you operated in your gift? And when you operated in your gift, the whole world was changed. So God has set us in a gift. The next thing we see, we are God's members. I see God's members. God's members. It has, he has set us in the, in the body, and if he has set us in the body, if he had not placed us there, if he had not strategically put us there, then where would the body be? If we don't understand that we are God's members, none of you belong to me. You are not my members. I never ever say my members did there. You are not my members. I did not die for you and I will not die for you. You are not my members. You are God's members. And because you are God's members, you have to please God. You know, I, I used to I used to beg people, won't you do this? I used to beg people, won't you do this? But, but I'm 18 and, a, and three quarters of a year here now. And so, if your excuse is good enough for God, it's certainly good enough for me. If the rodeo is good enough for God, it's good enough for me. If spending your money on people who don't know you is good enough for God, it's certainly good enough for me. If you decide to go somewhere else and do something else and find if car washing is more important to you than worship, and if you clear that through God, it's good enough for me. The text declares that they are God's members. We are God's members. Guess what? I'm a member of the body. And I ought to be operating in my giftedness. On Wednesday night, I'm walking around here singing. They just keep playing and they get louder and louder and louder and louder. <laughs> but you wait till Sister, Sister Paul shows up for choir practice. Yeah. Lord, that works. That's about the best she gets right there. So we are God's members. You don't belong to me. You don't belong to any pastor. Let me tell you, Jesus is the groom that's coming back to get the bride. I'm just the best man that's here to take care of the bride until the groom shows up. All right. All right. Good, good it's not my church. I didn't die for it. They're not my members. I didn't die for them. Every single person who hears me today and you're saved, you're born again, you are a part of the body of Jesus Christ, not the body of Matt Davis. Amen. You're a part of the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. You wouldn't even have me as the groom. Because the bridegroom, the groom that's coming to get his bride, the bridegroom is a sinless groom. Just, just the best man hanging out to the to the program starts. I'm just the best man that's here to help groom the bride and make sure the bride is is focused on what God would have us to do. That leads me to our third and final point: God's focus. Verse eighteen through twenty says, "But now God has set." The members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? What's going on here, this conversation is going on. The eye and the feet are having conversations. And one person thinks that they are not important because you're not the feet. The other person thinks I'm not important because I'm not the brain. The other person thinks that I'm not important because I'm not the arm and the leg. Let me just share with you. Everybody is important in God's kingdom. That's, right. yeah, yeah. That's why churches got to get to a point where we are kingdom minded, not church minded. Because when we're church minded, we want to think that everybody that we lead to Christ is going to come to our church. 
Let me tell you, if this church had everybody that I've led to Christ, we would be outside or in a different building by now. Right now, right. If we're kingdom minded, mm -hmm. we want to reach souls for Jesus Christ, and we're going to tell them about Jesus, we're going to lead them to Jesus, and we're going to tell them to go to a good Bible teaching church where you can be filled, where you can be discipled, where you can be made over and over again, simply because we ought to be kingdom minded. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. And when you are kingdom minded, you don't mind giving somebody else direction to another church. Did right, right. I just shoot myself in the foot? Right. <laughs> but when we're kingdom minded, we want the best for everybody else. When you're kingdom minded, even as the pastor, when you're kingdom minded, you'll be willing to say, I think your gift will operate better over yonder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you're kingdom minded. Because I'm convinced that regardless of who leaves or who comes, God is able to place the right people in the body. And when he places the right people in the body, God is pleased. And if God is pleased, I'm sure enough pleased. Says there are many members. I'm talking about God focus. There are many members but one body. It says to us we have to walk in unison. We have to walk in unity. We have to walk together hand in hand. We have to live together. We have to love together. We have to be a part of each other. Back home they would say it like this. We have to live and love each other where love learns. Love runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. When you cry, I'm crying. When you laugh, I'm laughing. When you get blessed, I'm celebrating with you. You can tell when a person is not God focused. When you get something new, they say, uh, everybody can't do it. Let me tell you, they're not celebrating with you. Uh, everybody not able. They're not celebrating with you. They are living out their narcissism. They are living out their, their jealousy. They are living out their envy. And they are not on your team. God is looking for team players. Just because we're not singing your song on Sunday, you ought to celebrate God anyhow. Just because the preacher's not hooping this Sunday, you ought to celebrate God in it. Just because it's not your chosen preacher for the day, you ought to celebrate God in it. A man and his wife get into an argument around home and, and they leave and they, they, they got into an argument, they, they settled things before they left home. They get into an argument, they go to church, and the man just happened to be the pastor. He's the preacher. And, and, and they did it right. They, they didn't let the son go down on their raft. They, they got it right before they left the house. And when the man got up preaching, the wife was the first one to stand and say, Amen, preacher. Go ahead, preacher. So the children were confused. So they got mama in the corner at home by herself and answered, Mama, I heard you and daddy and I hear you and daddy on a regular basis and I see y'all don't get along at certain times by certain things. But when you get to church, you are championing his call. You are celebrating. She said to him, I am not celebrating who he is. I'm celebrating who God is. And because God is greater than your daddy, I got to stay focused on him. God I serve and not the daddy that's bringing the message. Amen. Maybe that's why Sister David says amen to me. She's focused on the God that's spoken. She's focused on God and not the man that delivered the message. Amen. So we must be God focused. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 that we are salt and we are light. And if the world is going to be made the better, it's depending on our church. 30 years, 30 years we've been at this. 30 years we've made some things happen. 30 years souls have been saved. 30 years God has brought us over. 30 years God has blessed us in danger, seen and unsaved. 30 whole years, let me tell you, we didn't make it on our finances. We didn't make it on our good looks. We, we didn't make it because we were so smart. We made it because of God's amazing grace. Some 
somebody says he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. We made it simply because of God. It wasn't because of how good we've been. It's because God has blessed us. And not only did he bless us, he's favored us. Amen. You, you, you know how you can tell when, when God favors you? When, when you? when you never miss a payment and you know you should have. When, when, you, when you don't have the crowd that, that's financially stable, but, but God just keeps right on blessing. Yes. Let me tell you when you know you got favor of God. When you don't have the manpower, not the woman power, not the muscle power to do what God has blessed us to do. God has favored us. And don't get so sedated where you think you deserve to be favored. God did it because he's kind. God did it because he's loving. God dropped it on us because he has favored us. Let's don't let, let us not let sin delete our favor. 30 more years. That's, that's what people say. Let God give us 30 more years. And I just want to tell you, if God gives New Beginning Church 30 more years, he's going to do it with me looking on. You'll get that when you get to the house. Because I believe that God has a young man that he's raising up even right now that can take this church further than I can even dream of. But look what God has already done. All right, we we sitting in a horse pasture. Yeah. yeah. We, we we sitting where thirty foot trees used to stay. We 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 are sitting and, and we are standing where where chicken coops were right behind us. We are standing where we had to pick up drug paraphernalia, sex paraphernalia, alcohol paraphernalia. Let me tell you, God has been good to us. He has just blessed us. Amen. Over and over and over and over again. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. And in the midst of it, when God decided to really prove himself, 65 souls came to Christ all at one time because God has given us favor and God has watched over us and God has blessed us. No, they are in all state, but the fact of the matter is we are kingdom minded and when you're God focused and kingdom minded, you want people to get to know Jesus. Why we evangelize? We evangelize because we want the joy of watching others walk up in heaven. Or be raised up in heaven. We evangelize because we want the joy of seeing people turn from their sinful ways and turn to God. We we evangelize because God has commanded that we evangelize. And God has done a marvelous thing. But don't celebrate too long. Don't get so stuck on what God has already done. Jesus said that we will do greater things. We're going to do better things. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward when God just turned this world upside down yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. by using the New Beginning Church. Amen. Amen. I have a globe here. I have a world here. I have a world. And this world this world was complimented by my sister-in-law, Melissa Jane. And, and she put every piece together. She put every piece together. And uh, she was just really trying to be nice to me. I don't know why, but she was going to donate it to me. But because I value it, because I didn't think that I should make take advantage of it, I reached out in my pocket and I paid for it, plus more. It's because you give to what you value. That's right. That's right. That's why sometimes we can't donate everything to everybody because they will not value it. I told you a story, told you a story how a young man asked his mom and daddy for, for a Mercedes Benz. This 22, 23 year old asked his mom and daddy for a Mercedes Benz. A brand, a brand new one. They chose to give him a brand new BMW. This little small rascal <laughs> took that brand new BMW 
and ran it in the lake and let it float away and told his mom and daddy, I didn't ask for a BMW, I asked for a Mercedes Benz. Look at the parents in this room that's shaking their head. I came to the conclusion when I saw the news report, he grew up in the wrong household. Because had he grown up on the side of the track that I grew up on, on the side of the bayou that I grew up on, first of all, he never would have got the brand new car. Secondly, he would have appreciated whatever he had received. If it hadn't been a bicycle to ride back and forth, he would have appreciated. Let me tell you, young people, you are not entitled to anything but food, clothes, and shelter. Everything else is a gift from God. Everything else, people work for to get you where you are. Everything else, you got to make sure that you get it on your own. Can you see this rascal pushing a brand new BMW in the lake, in the river, and standing on the bank, Brother Irvin, and just watch it float away? He wouldn't have been singing that song I saw growing up, Float On. He wouldn't have been singing that song. Woo, if Matthew Davis had bought that car. Man. Woo, good God Almighty. He never would have sung that song. We have to understand that we have to be God-focused. And if we're God-focused, we're kingdom-minded. And if we're kingdom-minded, we're more concerned about soul winning than we are about stuff. We want people to get into the kingdom. So Melissa put together this, this puzzle for me. And every single piece she had to touch. Every single piece she had to put her hands on. And that's because God has blessed us and God has put his hand on every single piece. You have the voice you have because God placed it there. You have the lips you have because God put it there. You have the body shape you have because God put it there. You have the color of skin you have because God put it there. Stop being down on what you look like and celebrate who God made you. You are beautiful and wonderfully made. Stop letting man tell you you are not special. God says you are special. You are different. And he wants to make you a glorious thing in this body. This is God's body. I'm so glad he let me in the body. I'm so glad he changed my life. I'm so glad he has made me whole. I celebrate the fact that I am not what I used to be. I am not who I'm going to be, but I am not what I used to be. Because some of you couldn't stand what I used to be. Some of you couldn't stand the last 18 years of who I was. Listen to that. You see what I mean? But God has blessed us. And he has blessed us to move the entire world. If we can move 4251 Sure My Road, we can move the entire world. If we can pray right, if we can stick together right, if we can worship right, if we can love each other right, we can move the whole world. Because Jesus took 12 men, and one of those jokers was a devil. He took 12 men and turned the world upside down. How much more can he use us? As we march before 31 years, as we look forward to this time next year, will you be able to look back on this year and say that God has made a legacy out of me? Will you be able to say, well, I sit in the same seat every Sunday. I'm here. Hmm. Well, will you be able to say, well, I, I say amen when I ought to? Will you be able to say, I clap to my own songs? Will you be able to say, well, I showed up. You ought to be glad about that, preacher. Will you say that I am who I am and you just got to accept who I am? What that says is that you're not willing to change. And if you're not willing to change, then God is not using you. If you're not willing to, to be pushed and pressed, I won't even ask you to raise your hand. But some of you have felt like you were pushed and pressed. I, I hate to see that bald head coming because I know he's going to ask me to do something. Here you go. I hate to see his phone. I Oh, that's him. I, I call him when I feel like talking. Okay. But God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. 
You don't give yourself enough credit. The Bible says that we have to be God focused because we have been set by God. We've been placed in the body. Young people, you do what you do because God has given you the talent to do it. Mm-hmm. Dad used to say, if you can't make a hey, you better not get a you in condo. I know that's right. See, I lived at a time when parents didn't go to school to jump on the teacher. Mm-hmm. I know that's right. That's I lived at the time where the word got to dad and mama before you got to the house. And when you got in trouble, you got caught. I remember Coach Chance walking up on me in the locker room doing something crazy. I know that's right. Coach Chance was a deacon at my home church. Mm-hmm. He walks up in there and he just looks at me and I drop to my knees, Coach, don't tell mom and dad. <laughs> whatever you do, Coach, whatever I need, I will run laps. I will do push-ups. I stay after school. Whatever you do, do not show up Sunday morning and tell mom and dad. Because it's about the kingdom. And when you're building a kingdom, everybody is involved and everybody's excited about it. I want to thank the New Beginning Church for your excitement last week. I mean, I want to thank the New Beginning Church for welcoming our guests last week. People are still talking about the great things that God is doing at 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. People are still talking about it because you have a welcoming spirit. So let me thank you. But we have welcoming spirits because we serve the awesome God. He says we have to be God focused. We're God focused because we are God's members. And we God's focus because God has set us here. Yeah. And he blessed us. Thank you, Lord. And he did it through Jesus. Yeah. Jesus died for us. Yeah. He gave his life for us. Yeah. He rose for us. Yeah. And if you had been the only person on planet earth, Jesus would have died for you. Yeah. No one but you. He would have died for you. And because Jesus gave his life for us, we shouldn't complain about the little trouble we see. Because the Bible says that this present day suffering is not to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed through Christ Jesus when we get on the other side. That same Jesus that died is the same Jesus that's going to crack the sky. He's going to crack the sky at the trump of God. He's going to crack the sky and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain, we will be caught up with him in mid-air. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. The Bible tells me to encourage you with these words. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to get to know Jesus. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. This is your invitation. Just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Lord, thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you're here or you're listening and you don't have a church home, every member of the body needs a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is the captain of the ship. Where Jesus is the center of attention. Let us know if you want to join the New Beginning Church. We would welcome you and bless God for you. Trust Jesus. He saved. The door is open. Just now, just now. 
He's able. He's able. He's able. Yes, now. He's able. Just trust him. Just trust him. Somebody may be going, going through some things right now. I want to pray with you and pray for you if you struggle. If you struggle with stuff, if you struggle with things. Father God, we pray now, Father, that you bless us. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us for not staying in our place where you set us, you placed us. Forgive us for not being team players as we are God's members. Lord, forgive us for not being God-focused, focusing on the kingdom of God. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. That we will be made better so the world will be made better. Bless those who travel and bless those who are bereaved. Bless those, Father God, who suffer. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us. Heal every bow down here. Give ease to every troubled mind. Bless every sick. Bless everyone who's lost a friend or a family member. Lord, I ask you to be our comforter and our guide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He is the amazing God. It's time to give by tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Hallelujah. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial, sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way up in the air, and you will be served. Our blue and white envelopes are for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Our white and red envelopes are for a pastor's love offering. You can take one or both. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. Lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. Lifting God Jesus at Yahoo. God come, listening, God Jesus, and Yahoo, God come. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing the P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 774. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for gifts. We thank you for money. Thanks for increase. We thank you for income. We ask you to bless every person who's coming to give. Bless them, Father God, that they will give not grudgingly nor out of necessity. For God, we know you love a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We ask this time to stand. Follow first your questions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's God's awesome and sacrificial gift. This side to stand, please. Lord, right, from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrifice again.
thank you for these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Hale Band, will you come this way for me, please? Businesses to stand. Ask our business to stand. If you would stand, ask our businesses to stand. I just want to say hello to you. I want you to say hello to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah Amen. to the Lamb. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask this side here to uh, say hello to us. Tell us who you are and who invited you here. And then he's going to ask this side to do the same. Well, I'm Chase King. Yeah, I'm here from David. What? Chase King. Hey, you kind of grew up in a little bit. Hey, man, thank you so much. Who is that lady with you? I'm Ronnie O'Howard. I'm his mother. Hey, man. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. They're going to give you a business card. Would you fill out that business card for us? Both of you fill out a business card. We'd be so glad to, to call you and see how your experience was here at the New Beginning Church. Uh, bueno, en este lado tenemos a uh, um, Guillermo, su apellido. Guillermo Flores. Guillermo Flores uh, and uh, María Mejía. Uh, Guillermo Flores and María Mejía, they are here from Dallas. Uh, they are actually part of this congregation. Uh, they meet with us uh, uh, for Sunday school every Sunday uh, through Zoom, and they are related to the Melo, uh, to the Melo family. And uh, the kids are, uh, ¿cómo se llaman los niños? Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Um, Aaron, el segundo es Javier. Javier. Aaron, raise your hand. Aaron. Aaron. Uh, Javier. Xavier. Javier. And David. David. Okay. Yeah. And uh, also uh, uh, the teens and the uh, children. They have been uh, in uh, Sister Davis uh, uh, Sunday school online during the pandemic. That's when they joined. So they've been with us uh, since the pandemic started. Uh, Thank you so much for visiting with us. Thank you for being a part of our services on today. Uh, we're going to see who's on our prayer list. And uh, as I've already prayed for them, I want you to see who's on our prayer list. Our prayer list. Oh, really? Amen. Oh, really? Oh, really? He's coming. Oh, really? He's coming. Oh, really? Right. support in making our 30th year church anniversary a day that we will never forget. You are appreciated. Let's continue to work and see where God will take us for the next 30 years. Prayer and fasting. Today starts our prayer and fasting. The fast will end on Saturday, April 8th. Please think, pray and ask God for a favor on our lives, our families, and our church. March, April birthday celebration. Our March-April birthday celebration will be Sunday, April 30th, immediately after service. Please mark your calendars. Bible listening and journaling. journaling. We are listening and journaling through the Bible for 2023. Don't forget to listen every day. Please keep those in mind in our 
pray in your prayers. Uh, Betty Brown, Woods, Hemingway, Davis, Joe and Marlene Studeven, Galvan family, Darnell Pearson, Denise Porter, Raymond Alfred Jr., Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, Omar Galvan, Ed Brennan and family, laborers for the harvest, protection in schools, and world peace. Happy March birthdays, Adelie Melo the 9th, Yura Miles the 13th, Shirley Burley the 20th, and Maria Flores the 23rd. Thank you. and April birthdays together, we will have a celebration. I guess it's going to be a big, huge one, right, Brother Miles? We're going to have a, a stone gas, honey. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to have March and April birthdays together, and uh, Brother Miles is going to make sure that it's a stone gas, honey. Amen. So April and May birthdays together. Today we begin our fast. Today we begin our fast. No pork, no beef, no fried food. Uh, no sweets, no sodas for 21 days. We are praying that God continue to bless us individually, bless our health, bless our spiritual walk, bless our church. Amen. Amen. Do I need to say that again? Come on, say it with me. No. No more. No more. No, no, no beef. No sweets. No sodas. No sodas. No fried food. So we are we are holding off. On the pork, we're holding off on the beef, we're holding off on the sodas, we're holding off on the sweet, holding off on the fried food for 21 days, and we are going to make sure that we break our fast to Resurrection Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. Resurrection Sunday morning, we're going to break our fast, and then you by then you'll be got acclimated to none of these things, all of these things rather, and you won't be eating any of these things. Amen? Say amen. amen. Don't lie to me in the church house. Amen. 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 We got one honest person in, in the house. Are you are you gonna fast though? You are gonna fast. Okay, I'm just saying. Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch in the name of Jesus, Lord. Deliver in the name of Jesus, Lord. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. I've been dealing with that 18 and a half years. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Okay, if you're 55 and older, will you stand? If you're 55 and older, if you shame, stay sitting down. If you're 55 and older, if you're 55 and older, amen, amen. Okay, you may be seated, you may be seated. Uh, we do have food in the back, it's for sale, but if you're 55 and older, the church will pay for your meal for today. But you too, you have to have stood. <laughs> Amen. If you're 55 and older, we will pay for your meal today. If you are visiting with us, we will pay for your meal today. Uh, the church will pay for your meal if you're 55 and older. I guess the Whitlock's got to wait another 10 years or so. <laughs> well, you know you got to have some babies in the bunch, right? <laughs> got to have some. So uh, those of you who are 55 and older, we will sponsor your meal today. And if you are visiting with us today, we will sponsor your meal today. All the rest of us that's under 55, I mean all the rest of you that's under 55. <laughs> you hear that, Brother Kane? All the rest of you who are under 55 and you're not visiting with us, you're going to have to give forth a little uh, a little donation. Amen. So, Brother Kane and I, we're going we gonna to share a meal together. At the church expense. Amen. Look at God. Look at God. Come to church and get fitted. Amen. So in order for you to get that, that meal, you need to come by the office and pick up tickets in order to get the meal. And the meal is awaiting you in the fellowship hall. So after the benediction, we're going to retire to the fellowship hall, have a meal together, and uh, watch what God does. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I missing anything? Is is oh, something we got an announcement. Some gifts you're giving away, right? I've already done that. Oh, boy, I didn't forget. And when I didn't forget, guess what? She's already done it. Amen. 
So uh, we always give gifts to uh, our children when they perform musically. And so we are uh, Women Empowered. Women, Women Empowering Training Institute by Dr. Perry Shivers. They always give something to our youth and our young people for performing, and so they did that again today. Amen. Let us stand to be this missed. Thank you. 